If you took a room full of active retirement age people who weren't into bikes and asked what the perfect e-bike would be, I think this is what you'd get. This is the Giant Stance E Plus EX. It is pretty much the e-bike equivalent of an SUV, as in it's comfortable, allows you to go off-road, and you can take some stuff with you. It is a full suspension electric bike with racks, fenders, and lights. In the world of bikes, it is weird. In the future world of e-bikes, I can see this becoming a very popular category. In this video, I'm going to tell you about the Giant Stance E Plus EX, the features, specifications, and weight, and lastly, the one upgrade I think this bike needs. This bike is based off of Giant's Stance E Plus line of bikes, which is Giant's shortest travel and most affordable line of full suspension electric mountain bikes. All Stance E Plus bikes have 120 millimeters of suspension in the rear and 130 millimeter travel forks. In an ideal world, I'd be talking about being able to upgrade a non-EX version of this bike by installing the fenders and rack from this bike. However, at the time of this video, Giant doesn't offer the unique rack fender options found on this bike separately. Typically, full suspension bikes are not compatible with rear racks or full wrap fenders. Drivetrain. The drivetrain is provided by Shimano's workhorse Dior 10-speed drivetrain. This is pretty much where Shimano combines the lowest possible price with reliable wide range gearing. The cassette spans from 11 teeth to 46 teeth, which is combined with a steel narrow wide chainring. The steel should help the chainring last longer, but also contributes to the bike's weight. The chain is restrained by an MRP chain guide, which when combined with a derailleur's clutch should mitigate the issue of the chain bouncing off of either the front chainring or bouncing between the gears in the back. The brakes are Tektro 4-piston Orion brakes, which are a simple hydraulic 4-piston system using mineral oil. Rotors are 203mm or 8-inch rotors, front and rear. Between the brakes and the rotor size, the braking should be adequate for the types of paths or trails expected on this bike. Wheels feature tubeless compatible rims to which Maxxis Recon 29 by 225 inch wide tires are mounted. The tires have been chosen for being just capable enough for simple mountain bike trails, yet not so aggressive that they detract from the urban riding experience. Suspension. The rear shock is a RockShox Monarch R, an air shock with rebound adjustment. Many people convince themselves that they want a lockout on their suspension, but I don't think it is necessary. The mechanical design of the frame makes for efficient pedaling and can actually increase traction when going uphill, especially if the surface of the trail may be loose or gravelly. The air pressure is adjusted on the rear shock to provide appropriate support for the rider's weight. The one thing to keep in mind is that heavier riders may not be able to consider this bike due to the 275 PSI max pressure on the rear shock, which translates into a rider weight of about 240 pounds. The fork is a Suntour XCR34 Air LOR with 130 millimeters of travel. It features a tapered steer, lockout, and Suntour's quick lock through axle. The tapered steer and through axle add strength to the front end. However, make sure you get a tutorial on operating the axle if you buy one of these. Extras. The key features that make this bike unique are the lights, kickstand, full wrap fenders, and rear rack. One thing to keep in mind is that kickstands and off-road riding don't mix well. It has been said that friends don't let friends mountain bike with kickstands. While there is an element of fashion to that statement, there are two functional aspects too. The kickstand will be bouncing around and noisy. That noise could be a nuisance. The kickstand could also, while bouncing around, actually bounce down into the stand position, which could be really dangerous. So if you're going to go off-roading, remove the kickstand. Regarding the headlights, they are in a vulnerable position for damage in the event of a crash, so just keep that in mind. Electrics. As with all Giants, the motor is made by Yamaha, in this case a sync drive sport providing 70 Newton meters of torque, essentially how much oomph or acceleration you'll feel. As a reverence, very fancy e-bikes from Giant top out at 85 Newton meters on bikes a few thousand dollars more. The battery is a 500 watt hour unit, which Giant says could allow for a ride up to 175 kilometers. I'd count on 80 to 100 kilometers for a mixed surface where there might be hills or headwind. It can be recharged to 80% in about two and a half hours. The controller sits beside your left grip, is easy to navigate and has up-down buttons to change the assistance levels between fully manual mode up to a maximum assistance of 350%. So your motor amplifies your input by three and a half times in that setting. Of note on pedal assist e-bikes is the algorithm. 
the algorithm takes input that senses the steepness of the trail, overall speed, crank speed, and the power the rider is exerting to smoothly assist. The smoothness and predictability of the system enhances rider safety, comfort, and the ability to tackle tricky sections of trail. The icing on this electric cake is Giant's Smart Assist, which will automatically provide appropriate assistance for the terrain. This can extend battery life and be useful in places where you already feel like you've got your hands full and don't want to think about changing assistance levels. Geometry. While I don't want to spend much time talking about geometry, one key point on this bike is that it will suit a slightly less skilled rider on terrain that doesn't get too extreme. This bike has a slacker seat tube angle than what is seen on most hardcore e-mountain bikes, which means the rider will be a bit more comfortable with less weight on their hands, while the slightly steeper head tube angle will reduce the likelihood of front wheel washouts on flatter corners on mountain bike trails. These are trade-offs that make this bike more comfortable and manageable on mixed terrain, but make the bike less suitable for aggressive mountain biking. Keep that in mind. So who is this bike for? This isn't a hardcore mountain bike. Both its geometry and the addition of the fenders, kickstand and rack make it less practical for serious mountain biking. This is somewhat synonymous to our SUV comparison at the beginning of the video. SUVs are not good for pure off-roading. That is what a true 4x4 is intended for. SUVs serve a great purpose though for giving drivers a comfortable, confidence-inspiring ride, just like this Stance. This Stance EX can easily manage some mountain biking, just not expert level trails. It will be comfortable on everything from pavement to gravel to dirt. The full suspension will be there to add comfort no matter what. Weight and other considerations. This is a hefty bike. With the battery it weighs 58.5 pounds. The battery makes up about 8.5 pounds of that weight and best practice would have you removing the battery while transporting on a rack, so at least you'd only be loading a 50 pound bike. Being in Canada, I need to remind people to bring your batteries inside in the winter. Cold temperatures and lithium ion batteries do not go together well. This bike is priced at $47.99 as of late 2021. I have to mention the date because the prices are still fluctuating while the world's supply issues continue to mess things up. Availability in Canada is going to be very limited. We were allocated two of these for the entire 2022 year, a medium and a large. Looking through Giant's website at different regions around the world shows many places don't get this model and that there are slightly different versions available. Upgrades. Overall, I think this bike offers a well thought out component selection. There is one thing though, this bike is a perfect candidate for a dropper seat post. People know droppers are great, almost a necessity for mountain biking these days. The surprise for some may be how practical and useful they are for daily city riding. Stopping at stop signs or just wanting to get your feet to the ground easily can be a very assuring thing. Droppers are about 250 bucks. Lastly, as I film this and look at alternatives, I see that Scott now offers a bike that is a fancier take on this exact segment. So this may be the start of a new e-bike category. Please leave a comment after pressing the like button if this kind of bike interests you. I'm very interested to see people's thoughts. Thanks. As always, I'm Graham, the shop is Bike Bros. We can be found in Cochrane, Alberta, Canada, or online at bikebros.ca. We love bikes and helping people choose the right bike. Hopefully, we'll see you in the shop someday. Happy trails.